My name is Gifty Andropia. This is The Pulse. Let's start this way. Now, the second group of senior high school students head to schools across the country from today as the gold truck system begins. Students under the green truck will begin their 80-day vacation at home after being in school for 41 days. The new academic calendar introduced this year has produced its own set of problems, if you like, from concerns by teachers and students about the inability to complete the syllabus within the given time, among others. We will be scrutinizing these issues when the Deputy Education Minister, Dr. Yao Seidu Chung, joins me in the studio. You can send in your questions to our Facebook page, as I indicated earlier on, because he will be here to answer the questions. I certainly have no questions of my own. Well, maybe I don't. But you have the questions, and he'll answer. Let's start with my co uh, the conversation here in the capital. I have been uh, at the Accra Senior High School and here is what I bring. A little bit of idling, a little bit of play, a little bit of registration and of course some maintenance works. It is midterms here at the Accra High Senior High School. But on Monday, the Gold Truck students start studies in full force. And that will be happening in about 400 schools across the country where the double track system of education is being implemented. It is no secret the number of experiments the Ghanaian education system has gone through in the hands of politicians. Here we are in 2018 with what is a permanent semester system and a temporary shift system known as the double track system. Some of the teachers have already arrived and they have been in orientation. Depending on where you sit and how you look at it, the glass may be half empty or half full. Well, from the Upper West Region, correspondent Rafiq Salam brings us today's agenda where students of the Wa Senior High uh, Technical School say the time allocated for the double track system is not enough as they have not been able to cover all the topics, although they boasted that they have the best of tutors for the subject. The 41 days allotted for their studies on campus isn't enough as they are unable to grasp the topic when it is treated. Let me better for her. Wa Senior High Technical School admitted a total of 730 students for the senior high school double track system. Out of the number, 315 reported to school for the green track on September 11. Government introduced a double track system in senior high schools in the country to create room to absorb more students to enter senior high schools, thus increasing enrollment, reducing class sizes, increasing contact hours and the duration of holidays by making use of the existence infrastructure. Authorities at the West Senior High Technical School blatantly refused to speak to me on the challenges they grapple with because they have not gotten permission to do so from the Ghana Education Service Office. However, it is evidently and crystal clear that challenges abound in the school. Bayara Mary hailed from the Jiruba municipality and was placed here on the green track. She is offering home economics. She walked me through the challenges that they were confronted with the past 41 days of their stay here. We have no enough classes. We meet under trees. We sit inside the dining hall for prayers and we make a lot of noise. Our boys, they are suffering. Their chobos are outside. Some are lying on the floor. Some cry. They don't know where to place their chobos. Sometimes the taps are not flowing. Sometimes we waste time at the time that the tap. Sometimes we go, we will not get water. Sometimes we won't even get the water. So due to that, we can't even go to class. We go to the dining hall. We are using the tables that we use during our dining time for the class. Mary was, however, happy with the quality of teachers and food prepared for them. We enjoy the food. For the food, there is good. And the teachers, we have enough teachers who teach us all the subjects. And they, we enjoy the teaching. For the teaching, is enough for us. And we have guidance and council coordinators who counsel us and advise us on something that is no good. They also advise, especially the ladies, on how to avoid ourselves from teenage pregnancy. For Salia Gafur, 
who is offering general arts the fourth one day period for the semester is too short for them to grasp all the topics. No, 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 it's never enough. It's not enough. Simply because me, the two topics we even treat, but I don't understand them. We have a number, a real number system, a real number base. And um, uh, the two set problem. So now we are interested in problem, real number base, we haven't finished yet. And they say that our days are limited, that's so this is the date for us to go, and we haven't learned anything yet. For students of this school who are on the green track, their semester is over for now. They are expected to be away for the next 41 days. Before they left school, they have this pep talk from the assistant headmaster of the school in charge of academics, Mr. Abdul Kadri Sisi. When you go home, there are classes being organized all over. Those of you who are not from what town, but there's no place now you cannot get SHS students and teachers to organize classes for you. Please make use of those classes. The admission you had is free. But the WASI you are going to write, the outcome of WASI is not going to be free. That one will depend on your hard work. They will be on vacation till January 5, 2019. As they leave school, Mayor and Salia has these suggestions for the government to make the system better. Me, I think they should stop the double track and let us come together and take our serious studies. Now we are going, our job boxes, where to even place it is not good for us. We are not getting place to place them and we have to put them well. They, they are crowded. We can't even put them well. Some of our, we, we have to carry our bags to the house when we are reporting back and we will bring them. So if it was that, it is not double tracker. If all of us come together, when we are about going, we will get enough place to place our items. We need more days, so because we need more days, they have to cancel the double track system and just let us come together and learn well. Now that the semester is over for the green track, preparations are far ahead for the gold track to also come on. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. Wah! Rafik Salam there. Well, the concerns from what Senior High's uh, Technical School, it's not necessarily different from what we've been reporting on so far. Let's hear some of the concerns raised by some teachers and students in some senior high schools that we visited this week. Let's start with the students. I've not been able to cover all. Why? Because some people came late, so we had to go back and start again. So it's very difficult for my classmates who are very slow when it comes to learning or grasping things quickly. Actually, we haven't been able to cover a lot. It worries me a lot because sometimes I, I think maybe we won't be able to finish our syllabus before writing there because of the tracking system. That's so. The double track, to say, is very, very, very bad because most of the things that we have covered in the syllabus, we have not reached any part at all. So I would say that it's very, very bad. And then uh, some of the students, they can learn without a teacher. Okay. You see, okay. because they are some um, type of people that like teachers to teach them before they will learn whatever they are coming to. So if we go home two months time and then we come back like this, if that person, the mother or the father, it's not having uh, money for extra classes. Most of the girls may involve in a bad thing like pregnancy, stealing and all those things because this education, if you are coming to school, you won't think of those things but if you go home, you are idle, people are not there, you may think of other things that will engage into all these things. I would say it's a good thing because during that period, when we go home, we, we will get enough time to learn. And apart from that, if our parents are able to afford money to attend extra classes, then we learn at home. From where to keep the chalk buses to inability to grasp uh, and to finish the syllabi? Well, those are the concerns of some students. What about the teachers? What do they say? Listen. Supposed to. Um, cover about four topics, but I was able to do only two. But I wanted to, them to understand the concepts, and so I had to take my time to do that. You know. When 
parents were informed, stakeholders were informed. We were all, what is it? So we did a lot of consultation, a lot of questioning to get the, the essence of this tracking thing. And you realize that the, 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 the idea is not a bad idea or no, but the issue for me at that first instance was how are teachers and other stakeholders going to embrace this system? For now, we're able to at least go through, we did a lot of education, sensitization of parent and both parent and student. And then we think it, it has yielded a good food. But let us wait. Let's go out there and get a, a, a yellow or a gold track on board. Then when the two sets go through the, their first semester, we then come back and see what is happening. It has been a successful uh, half semester. Okra girls, we didn't have challenges. You see, all these boils down on preparations. This is a new policy that is being implemented. Uh, we have had trainings for preparation of timetable, allocation of PUS, and for a, a number of days. So based on the orientation we have had, we have been able to put plans in place. There were occasions we had as much as 68 students in the class. Okay. This time we have as low as 39, 39 Whoa. students, yes, depending on the program. Um, I don't think we'll be able to talk about completion of syllabus now. Okay. We are talking about a full semester. This is just half semester. Okay. And from the beginning up to this time, we have schemes of work we have prepared to work with. So there are timelines. We prepare the schemes according to your strengths. I think it's one of the best intervention that uh, the government uh, has rolled out. Uh, it has increased enrollment uh, and we are enjoying it. Last year, last academic year, we admitted about 516 students, but this year we have admitted 1,368 students, so almost uh, double. double, more than double. So those are the concerns of the teachers as well. Well, let's have the conversation now. I have the Deputy Education Minister, Dr. Yawase Duchum, in the studio. He's one of my most regular guests. So thank you very much for your time. And thanks for responding any time that we've called on you. How is it going? Going very well. Going very well. Very exciting. It's, it tells on your face, though. Very exciting, though. Okay. I wake up every day and I'm excited to go to work, so. Okay. Yeah. So far, we've had the 40 days go through, uh, I don't want to say successfully, how would you rate it? I would say very successful. Um, of course, there were concerns and, and even up to this point, you can hear the kids saying, uh, we, we, like WASEC Tech, mm -hmm. we have challenges with chairs and other tables, but let all of them come together. Mm -hmm. Can we imagine? <laughs> 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 okay. There were half of you in the school, mm -hmm. and you are saying that you had challenges. And this was what the double track was meant to do, that you divide the school into two, the form ones into two. You're able, at the Accra girls, our assistant headmaster was saying mm. that they've been able to reduce class size. Last year, they had about 68 in the class, now they about 39. That was what double track was meant to address. And it's, it's addressing those things. But you can see the children saying, oh, bring all of them together. But now that we are half, we are still having challenges. So, but, so but can the, you imagine? The, so there is concerns about how some of them are unable to understand what's being taught because they feel like the teachers are rushing through. There is concerns about where now they have to go home. Uh, they have to think of where to keep their uh, trunks and chop boxes. And, and I mean, in the, uh, when, when schools were not double track, when there's vacation, you still you take your <laughs> <laughs> So, but the bottom line though okay. is this if you look at what a cry girl's headmaster, assistant headmaster was saying again, they have scheme of work, mm -hmm. they know they cannot cover everything because half of the semester is covered by a green track. So, I can understand the students looking at, oh, we need to finish this. What they are not understanding is that they have not finished the semester. Okay. To them, going home means you finish. This time, going home means you've done half of it and you take advantage of the vacation since you have your books to study, come back, and then finish up with the rest of your peers. So, so the understanding is still not getting seeping in the way we want it you to seep in, in terms of the students understanding that 
no cause for alarm. Mm. This is half semester. We're going to take the advantage of it and review and maybe read forward what okay. we are supposed to do, come back and finish with our peers. Uh, so they should um, understand that the semester has not ended. So they should understand. Is there, if you if you are rolling out or implementing a program like this, and you have a, a key uh, a key stakeholder like students not getting, not grasping what this is all about, would you say that there is a need then to reach out to them? Because it looks as no, if it's, it's most the, of the times we've been reaching out to either parents or the teachers, that the students who are involved in this themselves don't seem to get I, it. I mean, the, the bottom line is this. How can the Minister of Education assemble all students across the country and talk Not to them? Not necessarily. It's the, it's the responsibility of the school. Okay. For example, the, during the orientation, mm -hmm. they should have been informed about the intricacies of the double track system. So that is something that we're going to reinforce. Okay. That uh, schools should take advantage of the gold track that is coming and make sure that there's almost like a, a lesson designed around helping the students to understand uh, the new school year so that it can reduce anxiety okay. among them. You can see a student saying, oh my God, I have not finished what I'm supposed to learn and, and school is over. These are things that counselors should help students to understand. And I'll take a cue from this to mean that we need to do a better job getting our schools to educate the children, who are a very important stakeholder group, as you rightly said, to understand mm. whilst they are in front of them and whilst they are doing the orientation. They, they don't take anything for granted. For I think granted. if there's anything that we'll learn from the WAS sector presentation is, be, uh, is, is the understanding that if you look at what the kids were articulating, mm -hmm. they were not really appreciating. They don't seem to they understand. They don't understand don't that... Um, if you are saying, I'm struggling with uh, chess, right? But all my friends should come so that we can go together. So what happens? So I think it's, it's important for us to not take them for granted and <clears throat> I just assume that they will understand mm -hmm. and help them to understand. So you reduce anxiety among them. Okay. So hopefully this anxiety will be reduced. And uh, like, like the head, head, assistant head teacher was saying and like the minister is saying, uh, the, the, the semester is not over, which is why you have not been able to finish the, um, the syllabus at the, at the moment. But I'd like to find out from you, upon hindsight, what would you like to change? What sort of changes would you like to effect with the uh, green truck system? I mean, at this point, um, in terms of the calendar, there's nothing that you can effect other than the fact that uh, we are working hard to get all our schools on a single track system. Mm, not, not necessarily okay, so, about so correcting that, anything, but the question, my, my mm -hmm. question is to, is to find out, you've seen how the system has gone. Mm -hmm. If you had the chance to make any correction, what, is, what would you like to change about it? If you, I mean, if you, yeah, at, you, at this point, the only thing I would say is that the orientation should be done in a manner that students will be able to understand that the semester is not over and mm -hmm. therefore this is how the learning and, uh, program is going to be, and okay. by the end of this, uh, at the end of this session, we didn't have completed. I mean, listening to the WAS sector student, that's why I would say that we need to do a better job okay. educating the children when they come to school. When we give them the syllabi, uh, we should be able to explain to them that these are the units you're going to cover in the whole semester, in the whole year, okay. and half of the semester, this is what you're going to do. Okay, they're going to be home for, what, two months? Yes, and, two and calendar months. To, and, and while they're at, they're at it, what are they expected to be doing? This is the last mm -hmm. time we spoke about this, but I don't think we, we, uh, we government has addressed it. You, you, you see, the, 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 the opportunity here is this. Students are going home, and, and there are two schools of thought. There's one group that says Green Track will be the best performing students because mm -hmm. when they go home, they've, they've been exposed to their material, now they have a chance with their books to really read over what they've covered. By the time they come back, they can truly beat Gold Track. Hmm. And some Gold Track students are saying, yeah, we had the opportunity of even reviewing what we were supposed to do. Now that they are, we are in school and we're not going to have any major break apart from the Christmas break, we're going to be able to beat Green Track when it comes to the end of the year um, in terms of the exams. I think if you look at the whole arrangement, you have pros and cons in terms of how it benefits Green and how it benefits Gold track students. But okay. the, the only thing that somebody will say is, oh, they're going to be home for two months. What do you do? Now, we've had long vacations in this country. We have right. breaks that students had. The last thing we want to do is to be able to prescribe for parents 
what their children should do apart from the admonition and the advice that when the children are at home they should read they should do other things that will be helpful to them when they come back to school if you are a parent who is selling at Makola is the government going to mandate that your child cannot be with you mm. to support you to help you uh, as I've always said when I was going to school and, and, and for many children in rural areas when it's vacation time that is when they go and help their parents on the farm and do so many other things which are equally important. They are getting important life skills. When you are working, it's a very important life skill which can really serve you very well when uh, you grow up and uh, you go to college and, and live uh, life beyond. Mm -hmm. So I think what we are doing now is to support them with learning guides and other materials and be able to say that when you're vacation, read around this, solve these problems, which uh, most schools are doing. Other than that, there's no mandatory a uh, vacation program that would take children away from their parents, apart from senior high school three, okay. where they are going to have a shortened first semester vacation so that they could prepare for the WASI. For the WASI. So they will be home for only after the first four months is done. They will only go home for four weeks, come by January 5th uh, to finish the year. So they will be there from January 5th to June 1st mm. because of their unique circumstances. Otherwise, all other levels will have the full complement of vacation. Okay. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Are teachers allowed to organize extra classes in this, in this period? We've seen, we've seen some interesting billboards and, and, and stuff like that that's advertising uh, mm -hmm. double track vacation egg, egg, that, that, or classes or something that like that. That speaks to the ingenuity and the innovativeness of Ghanaian teachers. But are teachers so, no, allowed? I mean, the teacher is on vacation and he says i'm willing to offer my services a parent is saying i don't need my child to help uh, to help me on my cuckoo farm he can participate in the learning process there's nothing illegal about that okay however if this was going to be done um and the teacher who is on track mm -hmm. leaves classes to go and teach that that is where you can say you can do that but other than that i don't see how anybody can say that uh, teachers are not allowed. Uh, people are private school people are being innovative and creative. Others are looking for ways where they can provide extra support. In fact, there are some churches that are organizing um, some programs for their uh, their church members in terms of helping them uh, 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 um, avoid idling about or those kind of things and putting them on, on um, to work in terms of learning. And I okay. think they need to be commended for it. Okay. Well, right now, I'm going to just go take questions from our viewers. Um, so we, we, we cut down my questions, and then we'll be able to answer a lot more of the questions. So on Facebook, that's the question we put there. We'll tell you what's going to happen. And um, let's see what the comments are. Let's go down. Let's see what the comments and the questions are so far. And I'm going to take, so, so, so let's go down a little bit. Let's start from the beginning. I'm going to take about two or three questions and then you note them and then we can go back to the, uh, the rest of the questions. Shadrach Nanado says, please, I want to know how the extra classes are going to be organized in the district levels <laughs> for those coming to stay home for almost 40 days. Some of us in the district are qualified degree teachers who are teaching at the basic schools and are prepared to help in the extra classes that are planned to organize uh, for the student whilst they are at home. I want to know the venues and the amount involved. Thank you. Concerned teacher, Pusiga District, Upper East Region. And this is one of the questions I was talking about. This is one of the issues that we discussed the other time, that someone has said that the government was actually organizing some kind of extra classes because it looks like that's the reflection of the question um, that this teacher is asking. Uh, because of this, the nature of this question, I, I mean, you can answer, you can speak to it yeah. if you want to, before we take the rest of the two questions. I mean, at the beginning, there were different ideas that people were uh, suggesting and, and saying, why don't we do it this way? But we, we have to think through it and see that how do you mandate uh, classes for students during vacation? And, and you have a situation where a child may leave uh, about 20 miles away from the nearest uh, district capital, as he alluded mm. to. The student take a bus to go there. What happens? In our opinion, vacations have always been vacations. And it's just a way of counseling the students to use their time well, like they do when they're in the universities. There shouldn't be any mandatory kind of uh, okay. vacation class where students are required to go. We mm. just have to make very good use of their time when okay. they're in school. And so then 
give them opportunity, depending upon where they live, to really um, always uh, review their notes and do other things that will help okay. them be on track when they come so back. So if the district assemblies decide to do any of these, that's, that's up to them. Of they're, course. they're allowed to do yeah, so. Yeah, they're allowed to do okay. so, Okay, so district assemblies, municipal assemblies, metropolitan assemblies can decide to organize any sort of uh, classes or gathering for their students if they so wish. So the teacher who asked that question, I don't know if your answer, uh, you, you've had your answer, but it basically means that there's nothing from government at the moment. But you can reach out to your district assembly and find out what they're doing. You can propose to them that this is what you want to do, and I believe that they'll listen to you. Hippo uh, Dowley says, the policy is good, but my concern is a teacher. They teach from 7 to 4 p.m. with no motivation and no feeding. If care is not taken, most of our hardworking teachers will be weakened and made unproductive. So please note that. The next question says, uh, from Eja Kwesi Kanga, says, where will the teachers of the gold truck stay? Is it that the teachers for the green truck will also go on vacation for their colleagues to occupy their houses? So this is for the boarding, te uh, those teachers who are in the bungalows. Example, there are very so few teachers on bungalows these days, but <laughs> I think the impression has been created that every teacher lives on campus in some schools. Majority of the teachers don't live on campus anyway. There are but some schools where no teacher live on campus. Okay. So, so, so the old infancipin model and mm -hmm. Achimota model is almost a thing of the past. That is not to say that we need not build more uh, mm -hmm. uh, housing uh, for teachers on campuses. So most of the people who have been hired are excited to go to work. And that is why we posted them to places that are close to where they live at present times. But it doesn't also mean that there are teachers who are not living in, in bungalows. So those who are living in bungalows... Oh, no, they will stay in their bungalows. No. And, and for those... And, and because New teachers who are coming, mm -hmm. nobody promised you anything in terms <laughs> of a bungalow. So, so what it means is okay. that those who are there, nobody's going to ask them to vacate their... No, when they were going on vacation, nobody was asking them so, to vacate their premises or bungalows. No, that's not what is going to happen. Okay. And, and for new teachers who came in, they came in with understanding mm -hmm. that they were not going to be provided bungalows. And this is why we did not do national posting. What okay. we actually did was look at the residence of the applicant and get a school that is close to him or her. Okay. And that is and what has been done. We place them directly to the schools, okay. not to the regions. Okay. Um, uh, th th there was also this question about teachers teaching for longer hours. I mean, that uh, is without without very food. interesting, uh, my sister. <laughs> Every school may be unique, but on average, our teachers are not teaching for more than 18 hours per week. You know the 40 okay. hour work day? Because of all the other extra responsibilities, grading of assignments mm -hmm. and other things, the actual period of time that they stand on their feet in their classroom, uh, for some, uh, it's about 18 hours. So we don't have a situation where somebody is standing on their feet non stop and From therefore four they to make seven. 4 to 7, no, um, 7 to 4. That, that is not uh, actually the case. However, okay. uh, that teacher may be in a school where there were some unique circumstances, but based on the timetable that we did, we did not anticipate anybody having to teach from 7 to 4 on a daily basis okay. without a break. But hey, um, I don't know where he's calling from and the school where he's at, so I cannot okay. say emphatically that it never happened to you. Mm. Well, maybe you're watching and you can get... Uh, this concern or the feedback for the question by the minister. If you have, uh, you want to provide further clarification, further information, do so. And if he's here, by the time we do so, we'll get some, we'll get some more um, answers uh, from him. W let me find out also about the teachers who were supposed to be posted. Was that eight thousand? You said you were employing. Yes, we got our clearance okay. uh, for eight thousand eight hundred plus uh, teachers, and we have deployed at uh, them at this point mm -hmm. and they've been sent directly to their schools uh, which is very different from what it used to be okay. where they were sent to the regions and the regions will have to take some more time to find out where they need to be okay. this time around we look at the needs of the schools they requested for certain category of teachers and uh, for different subjects so they they align that with applicants who uh, took the test and, and qualified and posted them directly to the school so I'm sure by uh, today, tomorrow, a number of them will be reporting uh, okay. to their schools, with their, to their regions first, with their appointment letters, and then complete uh, some paperwork there, and then go to their okay. schools. Okay. I must say, though, that this afternoon when I went to, actually this morning when I went to the 
uh, Accra High Senior High School, some of the teachers had arrived. We're told that some of the teachers had arrived and they were in a meeting with the teachers and the head teacher as well. We understand that they were going through some sort of uh, orientation. So you commend us for that, uh, right? Well, I don't know uh, if I should commend uh, you. Uh, you uh, just uh, did uh, your uh, job. Come on, come on. The government just, yeah, yeah, just did his so job. When we don't do our job, then you say, yes, hey, when we don't do it. When you don't we, do the job, we have to say it because we're paying our, for when it. When we do our job. When you do your job. Even, even when you are, oh no, <laughs> that's not fair. When you okay, come to work, so, when so, you come to work, uh -huh. you are doing your job. Yes. But it feels so good when, when your someone, boss says, "Gifty, you are doing a fantastic job." Like oh, I'm telling you right boss, now. If my boss says you've done a fantastic job, no, then, then you should though, be happy. Even though I'm not your boss, I'm going to say you've done a fantastic job, <laughs> okay. and you keep on doing very well. You impress everyone. Okay, of you've us. done well. <laughs> <laughs> the ministry has done well. Uh, that's, but, but the thing is, I did not get the details. You know, usually the devil is always in the details. I did is not get the it, details as to how many teachers have come. No, no the, the I only thing knew is that the teachers, teachers have come. come. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, uh, a number of them are reporting. They are picking up, they are printing their appointment letters, and they are reporting to their schools. Okay. I mean, the beauty of this is we learn from the past recruitment and deployment exercises where you just send the people to the region, the region is then struggling where to go and okay. take you so long time. So this was rapid deployment by Ghana Education Service under the leadership of Professor Opukwa Mankwa. He did a fantastic job mm. together with his deputies in making sure that they went directly to the schools as okay. directed by my minister. Okay. So hopefully we'll get some more details. Sure. By Monday, we'll get some more details as to yeah. how many teachers have been posted, where are they, are they meeting the need, uh, the requirements in the, various, in the various schools. But that also brings to mind um, the issue about uh, trainee, trainee teachers. They've been complaining because I have some questions here. That they sort of they are not going to senior high school, the, so... The, those are for business schools. Are you asking me because I'm, oh, oh, I'm in charge of business no, schools? No, there's, too. A, <laughs> there's a question here. We'll deal with that. But there's still a question here that seems to f uh, tie in, in, in that. Komala Foster says, I should try to ask you questions with regards to newly trained teachers posting and their fate after the national service. Because that's the issue you were addressing, I think, yesterday uh, when they, they went on, uh, on their demonstration. They are saying that they are being forced to do a national service that's quite different from the national service day or from the teaching postings that they usually get after school. What's happening? I, I, I think at the end of the day, cooler heads will prevail uh, because uh, we are all looking at the same thing. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to improve learning outcomes. And I don't want people to step into the classrooms and they are not happy. So as the person in charge of general education and looking at my busy schools and abysmal performances, I'll be the last person to get teachers angry uh, before they even step into the classroom. I mean, teachers are the most important uh, stakeholders when it comes to education. Of course, parents are important too. But when it comes to teaching and learning in the classroom, uh, satisfied teachers, content teachers are the ones you need to bring about improved learning outcomes. And that is what we are focusing on. So yes, but you the took only their issue, petition. Oh yes, I took their petition. And I'm glad, I was so happy to be there to take their petition. But the only issue you were saying was? Um, I'm, I'm taking it to the intended recipient. Because I walked in there, I went there thinking, I was getting it when we have the, the minister. Okay. So while standing there, I heard them saying, this is for the vice president. I okay. said, oh, okay, for vice president, it's going to the intended recipient. So that is why I said, I'm taking it. And, okay. and lo and behold, and truly, I went to the office and we put a cover letter on it and sent it to the vice president because he was the intended recipient. Okay. Has he responded? Uh, not to us, but um, I know the vice president is a hardworking man and uh, he cares dearly about education and he's going to respond uh, to the needs of our uh, trained uh, trainee teachers okay. who are now going to step into our classrooms to uh, support our education mm. reform agenda. You're mentioning an issue about teachers who are not, that you are not the, 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 the type that's going to uh, look on for teachers to go into the classrooms angry. But then there was an issue, you said. What's oh, the no, issue? No, the, the issue is this. Uh, our position is that um, you need to do your national service because now you are part of tertiary. You know, once upon a time, uh, colleges of education were not part of the tertiary education system. Now they move into tertiary. And from there, the law requires that they do national service. So I think the position of the national service 
uh, uh, people was that you need to do your national service. Now, Ghana Education Service is also going to allow them to register with them with the Ghana with Education the National Service. With the Ghana Education Service. Okay. So it's almost like a concurrent registration. You register first with the Ghana Education Service. You tell the Ghana Education Service that this is the district that I want to go to. That data is then transferred to National Service. So when you go to the National Service portal to register, mm -hmm. your, um, the data that Thank you provide you. to GS will be populated into your portal okay. at the National Service. And that is where you complete the registration process. Now, where there's a point of disagreement is mm -hmm. who really posts the trainee teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it the Ghana Education, Education Service, Service or the National so, Service? So so when we met with them, the agreement that we came up with at that point was that it would be done collaboratively that, uh, in partnership with Ghana Education Service. That was that was the issue that came up. And then they also had a number of issues who were legitimate. What about compensation? What do you do with this? Who sends us to where? And how do we get? Um, because at the same time, within one year, they need to do induction for the, uh, the, the NTC, National Teaching Council. So the other thing was, when I'm doing national service, is it going to count towards the induction? And the response was, yes, it will count towards the induction. So, so I even uh, was telling them that uh, you, do, uh, you are doing three things at the same time, because it's also a probation for Ghana Education Service. The one year counts as probation. Whoever is hired by Ghana Education Service, you do one year probation before you become a regular or permanent employee. Okay, but is that so, different so, from what they do, they used to do? No, it, it's not different. It's the same so, thing. So even though they are doing national service, it's still going to count as a probation. And they are also doing national service. It's also going to count as induction. But is it for, really the, necessary? For national teaching council. Is it really necessary to take them through national service if they are still going to be on the Ghana education I mean, system, the I usual mean the, system? The, 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 the issue is that how do you get your national service certificate? Because when you look at nurses, for example, they do national service. It doesn't mean they are not working in hospitals. But I also understand that teachers have unique needs and certain circumstances, and they brought it up at the meeting because, yes, you expect him to do his lesson plan and grade mm -hmm. assignment and all those. All those came up at the meeting. So at the end of the meeting, what we concluded was that we have come to a set of understanding. However, from now, meet with Ghana Education Service and iron out any concerns that you may have in regards to how you are posted. Then also the team that came meet with uh, the National Service Secretariat, iron out any concern that you might have. At the end of the day, you revert to us as a Minister of Education and say that, okay, we met with Ghana Education Service, we got this uh, concession, so we didn't. We met with National Service, we got this concession, or well, we didn't. So therefore, we are coming back to the Minister for us to deliberate further. That is why I think, um, to me, that is where they made a mistake. Okay. that you met with Ghana Education Service, you met with National Service, you may not have liked what they told you, but you didn't come back to us and say, you, we agree that we're going to meet with them. After we met with them, these are the point of contention. So minister, or deputy minister, what do we do? We never heard from them, so I was told that I should come and get their petition. So I, I, I think that is where I don't understand that, okay, when we agreed on this things, when you went to Ghana Education and you didn't like what they were telling you, you went to National Service Secretary and you didn't like what they were telling you, you had to come back to us and say, we came to some understanding mm -hmm. and you told us to meet separately with these two entities. We don't like what they are telling us. Therefore, we are coming back okay. to you uh, to kind of revisit the, the issues issue. that we discussed. But that, ne they in, did in not my opinion, that. never happened. I never got any... Uh, meeting request or the minister saying that we need to come back because we don't like what GS telling us or okay. NSS is telling okay. us. But it's too late. That's what I'm saying. Uh, cool, cooler has to prepare. I, 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 need to, I need to interrupt you briefly because uh, we have a problem with your sound. We'll have to oh. uh, deal with it. But uh, uh, let's hear from the Deputy Education Minister, Samu Kujeto Ablakwa. Deputy who's Education also been, Minister. Former. Uh, former, former Deputy <laughs> Education Minister, I beg your pardon, who has also <laughs> been uh, assessing the double track uh, system. Double track, double, tr double, double track, double track will be abolished under an NDC government. It's not the way to go. Now, as the students go home, what are they going to do between now and January or February? What will they be doing? This, this, this is needless. It's unacceptable. 
is totally avoidable. And what is going to happen is that your parents are rather going to spend more under the current uh, arrangement. That's what I was going to on uh, what's your expectation on the kind of students who will be produced and the kind of results we will see with the end of the first batch of the double? When we were at the Ministry of Education for four consecutive years, Ghana was adjudged the best performing WASI nation. We topped the West Africa secondary school certificate examinations. My fear at this rate is that we are going to lose that pride of place. And I shudder to imagine the kind of results that will be churned out, especially children who don't have parents who have the means to arrange extra classes. You can see that extra classes are booming. You are seeing double track advertisements all over the place. Uh, parents who don't have the means to send their children to those extra classes locations and give them all the extra attention and all of that. There's also the real risk of truancy because these are teenagers that are coming back home. And um, if you are not able to make special arrangements in terms of uh, how they can study and how they can be uh, well supervised and looked after. Only God knows uh, what's going to happen when their results um, uh, come out in 2020, because that's when we're going to uh, be in a position to analyze their performance. My fear really is that we are going to lose our place in terms of our WASI performance, and the future is looking very, very bleak already. Uh, most of the students are talking about how they've not been able to make the best use of, uh, of, 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 of the term because in, in a lot of places the congestion, the you know, lack of adequate you know, uh, availability of teachers and all of the challenges that we all know, you know the lack of facilities. It's clear that we're not ready, but because of cheap populism, in a, in, a, in a rush to just beat our chest. Cheap populism, that's how the former uh, Deputy Education Minister sees it. He speaks about losing our pride of pr uh, place uh, because uh, Ghana had topped the WASI uh, exa uh, exam results some time back. Fear of the results that, that are going to be churned out in 2020. And that actually fits in the question that I was supposed to take because uh, someone just posted, it's actually a comment. She said, uh, she foresees f uh, massive failure uh, in the in the uh, in, I mean, in the coming I mean, days. I mean, to the pessimist and the the prophets of doom, nothing good comes to Ghana. I believe in Ghana. I don't foresee doom. I foresee greatness for this country. And what he described mm -hmm. as as cheap populism, I call it on their part as la lack of foresight and vision for this nation. We've been here for 60 years after independence. The vast majority of the people who are disadvantaged have never had access to secondary education. And when a government comes and is determined to bring about opportunity to all and sundry, especially those who are disadvantaged, when the government comes to power and says it's not good enough when the top schools in this country only have the children of people who are like me, and therefore we have to reduce 5% to 30% in top schools in this country, so that disadvantaged students will have a pride of place and be able to go to West Lagos and other top schools. You call that cheap populism? To me, Ghanaians will be the judges. When you have a student from Tra going to Achimota for the first time in the, a female student for the first time in the history of Tra, go and tell them that is cheap populism. When you look at the son of a farmer from Bontefufu going to um, uh, Premper College for the first time, Go and tell that parent is cheap populism. To them, it's a destiny-changing experience. And that is what MPP is about. We are about how positive uh, we can be about issues that we implement and also make sure that the vast majority of the people that we have ignored over the years for the first time also have an opportunity uh, to really uh, begin to see that the government is for them and the government is not against them. The government is for the poor and the disadvantaged and the downtrodden the hawkers on the street who struggle so hard to make ends meet. When it's time for their children to go to secondary school, they shouldn't struggle. 
They shouldn't struggle to find money to pay deposits for them to go to senior high schools. And that is what the MPP represent. And we are going to represent that. We know our, our friends on the other side believe that we should wait for 10 years, 20 years, and the poor should wait. We believe the poor should not be waiting. And it is about time that we took them seriously. It's about time that we, we uh, come to appreciate that if the poor is not given the opportunity to access secondary education, um, those of us who have it will never have our peace of mind. So okay. we, we are for anything that will really ensure that the vast majority of our people get the best quality education possible. And my friend said something that was, was, was profound. He's thinking about Ghana's place in the world based on the way we compare with West Africa. Mm -hmm. We are thinking about Ghana's place in the world in regards to how we compete with South Korea. So, so when he's talking about Ghana was the best in West Africa, that was 35% pass rate. But that's still and, a, and, a way and, to measure it. No, the way to measure it against West Africa, 35%, 65% failing, and he's saying that that was better. No, we believe it's, it isn't good when you have a WASI system where 65% of the kids are failing. It is not acceptable. I'm not proud of that performance. We are going to work hard. That is why we have intervention. Pro for the first time, we are disbursing money to schools so that they can do extra classes in their school for students. We care about quality. And we're going to fight hard to ensure that children not only get access to quality, high-performing schools, but they come out and demonstrate to the world that they can be equally competitive with the rest of the world. Which extra classes are you talking about? In school, uh, what we've realized is that in a number of schools, the norm has become sink or swim. That is, you come here, you are not doing well, you're on your own. If you have money, you pay okay. so that teachers can teach you after school. That has been the norm. Mm -hmm. And what the government has done for the first time is that we are locating grants to schools to organize after school classes, Saturday school class, whatever they deem fit for the students who are struggling to catch up. Okay. So, so that is what this I This is a part of the double track system? Yes, yes, yes. Intervention that uh, was... Um, designed by the minister to make sure that students don't fall behind based on the fact that they don't have money to pay teachers for extra, for extra classes, classes whilst they are in school. Okay, well, let's, let me take my very uh, final batch of questions and then we'll take your answer and then we'll call it a wrap. Uh, Foga Nukunu says, what is the ministry doing to ensure sports and academic competitions are not interfered with? Kindly note that down. Uh, John Loko Kabla Akulache says, when the Form 2 and 3 vacate, they don't send their mattresses, trunks, and feeding boxes to the house. But why are we saying the green truck should send their belongings to the house? So this is a question that we addressed earlier on, but I think this is a different angle as well. And the same John says that if government cares enough, they should have adopted some community learning center for the gold and green truck students so that they can learn with their hands, either computer training, making of tie-dye, uh, soap making and bead making, these things will make the student independent and self-employed. This true and poor method of learning is a cake and the student don't like it. That's why failure rate is on the high. I think that's my final, um, my final uh, set of questions. I'll take your answers. And yeah, I'll I think he mentioned to my favorite thing, chew, poor. Pass and forget. I call it chew, poor, fail and forget. <laughs> Because, I mean, why are we glorifying it? <laughs> the majority of the people who poor fail. Uh, so, so it's not even too poor person. It's too poor fail and forget. And society will forget you. So yes, we are, we are making strides in that direction. So I agree with him that something needs to be done. But you see, what has become very insightful to me is the interest that Ghanaians have taken to issues concerning education, especially secondary education, as mm -hmm. a result of double track. So there are a number of things that through your reportage you've been able to open the eyes of and minds of many people too. And whenever they see the problem, invariably, they attribute it to double track. So, so, so basically what happens is that uh, if something has been highlighted as a result of the implementation of the double track and the interest the media has mm -hmm. uh, taken and, and has really highlighted, what happens invariably is that that may be the first time the person is seeing there's a problem. And, and invariably, they will say that, oh, because of the double track, we have this problem. Most of those issues have been there for a long time. And this is the time that we are coming to know, and we are all rallying uh, together to really confront those challenges. Mm -hmm. In terms of sports, I know mm -hmm. Ghana Education Services are, are looking at 
ways where they can really meet with sports administrators and, and, and very soon they will do a meeting and look at how any issues regarding double track and its impact on our sports program will be resolved. Uh, but as it has been done in other countries, uh, double track uh, does not in any way impede sports. In fact, uh, in some other jurisdictions, it supports uh, the idea uh, of improvement of sports because during the break, uh, there are some schools who will hold uh, students who are on that particular track to stay in school and, and practice. Mm -hmm. And that gives them more time to even practice and do well. But I can understand if no directly have gone to uh, sports masters, uh, they will be concerned. And Ghana Education Service, I'm sure, will be addressing this uh, in the very near future to make sure that sports masters don't have any anxiety mm -hmm. as to how best they can support their students to succeed in sports. Uh, under this current dispensation. Okay. I said that was my final question, but I saw this question here that I was, I was personally curious about. Um, this person says, the deputy minister is my man. <laughs> my question is why were parents told the second track will resume yesterday, but for parents to go and the schools are on midterms? Uh, Accra Senior High School, for example, today, they were on midterms. Yeah, um, I think that's what happened. We had requests from our headmasters that uh, the case have been there for two months and typically there's always a midterm. Okay. Yeah, so that was an oversight on our part. So there was no so, midterm in the Yeah, in the original track, the yeah, green track. The, yeah. So we had to put a midterm in there so that form two and form three can go home. But we've also uh, sent circulars out to headmasters that even though we we're publicizing the Saturday return mm. to school, if any student comes, they should accept them. Okay. And uh, for them to stay. So if there's any headmaster who is actually watching us, I want them to know that no parents should be sent home uh, if they are borders uh, because our school is not yet opened. Okay. Uh, we want them to accept students and take advantage of it to go through all the registration and okay. orientation from now till Monday. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Because I know, for example, that uh, Wesley girls, uh, they, they, they apparently got um, some sort of permission to start taking their students in early. I yeah. know because my sister is going there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> so so uh, if you're a parent and you, go into, you went to school earlier, you know, today is Thursday. If you, you, you're yeah, going between strange. today and Friday, uh, the school should be able to um, allow you to come through. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for coming. But there's one thing on my mind. I can't let you go uh, without without bringing it as, uh, bringing it up. Why is government so fixated on not allowing um, the old members on the KNUSD council to stay? On is that, the, on is the that your last question? That is my last question. I know I, I keep I, coming back. I, 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 I knew you were question. going to ask me, but you see, that is my I last happen question. to be the deputy minister who works with the KG cares and primary school children and. And then you have the junior high school and senior high school. Who will be going to I the tertiary? Go, I don't go to the universities. That is the, uh, the terrain for my big brother, um, Prof. Yanka. Okay. And I think he will be very happy to explain issues to you. Does it mean that you don't have an understanding of what's happening? Uh, you know I have understanding of everything. But I leave my, my, my colleagues to also do their work in terms of being able to articulate issues that are in their sector. Okay, so you want to leave it to Professor Yanka. Yes. If you had your way, would you allow the, you know, the old, the old, uh, you know, members to be on, on that if committee, I on that council? Mm -hmm. I don't have Personally. my way. I'm not a sector minister. <laughs> Dr. Yao Osei Duchum is a deputy education minister. He's one of my most regular guests here on the show, and we're indeed grateful for that, sir. We're thankful that you came. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope that he's answered some of your questions. So it's really amazing how the days just pass by, because it's been 40 days already since we've been talking about uh, the double the double track. It's been longer. Longer. It's 40 instructional days, so two months. So two months. <laughs> so there, you have it. I am curious to find out what the experience for the gold track student will be, and hopefully it will be a good one. Hopefully we'll all reap some good uh, uh, benefits from this system as we go along, despite the challenges that we're facing. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with it. You're still watching The Pulse with me, Gifty, and Do Apia. We've had our special edition with the Deputy Minister. When I return, I'll tell you about all the other stories, about the violent attacks in the northern region. we we'll also tell you about the mysterious deaths that are happening in Tema at Mahia. Do stay with us.